Hey guys, this is Kevin again from Audio Digital back with another Falcon tutorial. This time I want to talk about the um, oscillator architecture, how oscillators felt, fit into the bigger picture of Falcon. Um, if you've seen some of the other videos, you heard me talk about how the architecture of Falcon allows for a great deal of flexibility. Um, when you look at something like Massive, you have these three oscillators here. They're all um, wavetable oscillators, and they pretty much do the same thing. And the architecture is largely flex, uh, fixed. There's some flexibility, uh, but in Falcon, you don't have any artificial limitations about how many oscillators you can have per note or any of that sort of stuff. You can pretty much call your own shots. Uh, so let's look at what we can do here. Let's uh, start a new key group and put a synth in here. So we have our oscillator here. It is in the key group section. Even though this says oscillators, it is part of key groups. So that's important to understand in the way the architecture comes together. So like um, I said in the FX video, when you hit one note, you get one oscillator. When you hit two notes, you get two oscillators and each oscillator gets its own FX. But you can also add multiple oscillators to one, um, one key group. So like right now I've got three oscillators and all these three oscillators will trigger for every note I play. So if I play two notes, I actually have six oscillators running, nine oscillators. You get the point. And each um, of these are being summed together and they're each being fed through one set of effects for each note I play. So you can't get a separate effect for each of these oscillators. They're all going to be um, kind of, you know, held together by one set of effects. Uh, if you don't like that, you can um, add an another key group, a separate key group, and, um, and then you'll have a separate layer of effects for that key group. So you have the flexibility of doing it that way if you want to, but this is a kind of a powerful and a flexible way to do things as well, and you can layer things together. So one thing I want to draw your attention to is that a lot of these LFOs, I'm sorry, <laughs> a lot of these oscillators have uh, presets. Actually, the LFOs do too. So you can choose a certain preset. And you can also save your own presets as well if you've done something that you like. So FM has them too. So this Pluck, Pluck actually has a nice variety of presets. So what else can you do with these oscillators when you're stacking them up like this? Um, if I go over here to the gain, you see I can turn it down and up the volume. Let me turn off this extra one here. I can turn up and down the volume. But what if I want to set one of these to a different volume than the others? Well, I just come over here and unclick this link button and now each of these are independent. So I can click on this one and turn it up, click on this one and do whatever I want and give myself separate levels for all three. I can also do something like change the note tracking for one of them. So um, again, you have a, a bunch of options here. If I come over here and kind of do a clap sound or something. You can also turn these on and off by using the buttons here or here. So if I come here and I play this, it, it actually changes in pitch across the keyboard. But if I want to maybe sim simulate some kind of a, a acoustic click or something like that, then I don't want it to track on the keyboard so I can come to this note tracking thing here and set it to zero. So that way, no matter which note I hit, it's gonna give me the exact same sound. Um, so that's a good way to kind of get some mechanical click into your sound if you are into that sort of thing. 
So that's very powerful and flexible. Another thing you can do is um, you can go over here to trigger mode and you can actually cycle through the different uh, oscillators that you have here. If I play a note, I keep playing it. It's gonna go through each one of those every time. These other options like this one will randomize the order. And if I play a chord, it still uh, randomizes it, but it um, for each note, it's gonna use a different oscillator. So that's pretty fun. You can imagine having a lot of fun putting a different up different oscillators and uh, you know um, hearing different kind of variations in your chords and whatnot. Uh, one thing you can do with this sort of thing is if you want to simulate uh, a polysynth, uh, they there's actually a, a different piece of hardware for each oscillator in analog uh, polysynths. So sometimes maybe one of them can be out of tune from the other ones or one of them is noisy or something like that. So you can simulate that kind of uh, uh, older school or broken analog polysynth sound by setting up a bunch of analog oscillators and doing different things to them. Um, but what this is probably used most for is when you're doing sampling. And uh, if you play the same note over and over again and you're accessing the same sample, it has this kind of machine gun sound and it doesn't sound natural. So what you can do is record the same um, instrument at the same velocity several different times and create several different samples and then you can switch between those samples and it gives you a more natural sound you can do that with drums or with you know like any kind of acoustic instrument because there's they usually never sound exactly the same when you uh, you know play them success you know one thing after the other so this is a way to simulate that kind of sound so it's a very powerful feature and you can use it creatively beyond what uh, you know is the most common use obviously so uh, one other thing I wanted to tell you about is um, a lot of things can be automated you can automate the on off switch here and you can uh, set up a modulator for it to turn things on and off so you could do that with the mod will turn certain um, oscillators on and off and you know pretty much your your imagination can take you all kinds of places with that. So that's um, pretty much what I wanted to show you. I'm going to probably go over each of these oscillators and what they can do in another video. But for now, I'll just uh, say these are all sample-based ones. These use granular synthesis. Most of these use some form of granular synthesis. And... Um, this is just basically a sample playback and then the slices up drums and then the analog ones are, are, are pretty nice uh, the analog here of course we've seen that before and uh, then there's also an analog stack which is pretty cool um, it's pretty much like the analog um, but just a lot of them and then you can sync them across each other and uh, we also have the uh, drum synth that we just saw, which is, is really a nice drum synth. Uh, FM is, is nice as well. It's a four operator FM. So it's not as powerful. It's not really nearly as powerful as something like FM8, which is six operator plus some filters and stuff. But, you know, it gets the job done. It's, it's pretty nice. And then we have uh, the pluck, which I really enjoy a lot, and uh, the organ sound, uh, which isn't, you know, it's an organ sound, tone will organ sort of uh, oscillator. And then wavetable, which is also quite sweet. So you put these guys together, and you've got a quite, quite a formidable uh, synth palette to deal with. So that's pretty much it for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this is helpful. Let me know in the comments if these videos are helpful to you. Uh, let me know if there's some things that you want me to touch on that I haven't touched on yet. I'm, I'm going to probably do some, some more videos on Falcon and other things as well, so tell me what you're interested in and what works and what doesn't. 
And thanks again for watching. And please enjoy being creative. Bye.